Namaste. So here we are on the home stretch of this introduction to the thousand names of Shiva, Shiva Sahasranama. And Sage Upamanyu is winding it up with a big finish. <laughs> he has given several verses in a row full of parallel grammatical constructions in Sanskrit that explain the topmost position of Shiva and indeed are valid and powerful holy names in their own right. So let's continue with the next two or three verses and uh, see how far he can take this wonderful poetry of the holy names. Deva nam api yo devo muni nam api yo munihi yajna nam api yo yajna shiva nam api ya shivaha To him who is looked upon as the deity of all deities and the rishi of all rishis, to him who is regarded as the sacrifice of all sacrifices and the most auspicious of all things fraught with auspiciousness. Deva nam api yo deva. <laughs> Again, he is the god of gods. He is the god that the demigods go to when they have a problem. Even Brahma and Vishnu. If there's something they can't solve, something they can't do or deal with, they have to go to Shiva and petition him, beg from him to give them relief, to give them a blessing, anugraha. And so, what to speak of Brahma and Vishnu? <laughs> we are also beggars who seek Shiva's blessing, his pardon for our nonsense activities, and his blessings to elevate us to higher states of being and consciousness and ultimately to bring us to his lotus feet. That's the real purpose of yoga, sadhana, Vedic study, recitation of hymns, mantras, etc., etc., puja, and so on and so on. All the rituals and rites of spiritual life are all to accomplish this one aim, which is to bring us into contact with Shiva. Because Shiva is guninam api yo munihi, he is the greatest sage of all sages, the greatest yogi of all yogis. Say a muni. Muni is a someone who lives basically alone and a very austere condition of life and simply focuses his mind inwards on the transcendental absolute and tries to become situated there. But actually... It's not necessary to give up everything and go to Himalayas and live in a cave or something like that. Only very few people can actually do that. So what about the rest of us? Well, the rest of us get to do devotional service, bhakti, to Shiva. Shiva bhakti leads to Shiva yoga, meditation on Shiva. And this happens as a natural evolution or natural ripening of bhakti, and uh, when bhakti reaches perfection, meditation arises spontaneously. Why? Because yajna api yo yajnahad. He is the greatest of all sacrifices. Service to him yields the greatest benefit. And what is that? Shiva nam api ya shiva. The most auspicious of all auspicious things, which is liberation freedom from material entanglement, birth and death, freedom from karma. You know, the, the spiritual world is complete freedom. One can be anything, do anything, have anything, uh, because one is in relationship with the absolute in the form of Shiva, or whatever deity, whatever metaphor one chooses according to one's taste. This is the secret. Uh, to be happy, to be secure, to be protected, to be safe, 
we have to forge a relationship with the Absolute. The only way we can do that as human beings is through one of these metaphors, like Vishnu or Shiva or Devi, Shakti, see? Basically two types, the male and female deities. And then there's many, many uh, alternatives and expansions according to different pastimes and qualities. So this is the purpose of human life. That's why we're here. And so reciting these thousand names is an important part of sadhana for everybody. Rudra namapi yon rudra prabhu prabhavatam api yogi namapi yo yogi karananam chakaranam To him who is the rudra of all rudras and the effulgence of all things endued with effulgence, to him who is the yogin of all yogis and the cause of all causes. So Rudra is the expansion of Shiva in the material universe, and there are 11 Rudras, and each of them have their own specific qualities and pastimes and so on, their properties, their different tastes. And these are really for the protection of the devotees, that the devotees will have a form of Shiva that agrees with their particular mood, their spiritual desires, their flavor of love, their chosen uh, pastimes and mode of service. So he incarnates in millions of forms, actually, uh, one unique form for each of his devotees. And the same is true of any of the gods, because they are all basically expansions of Shiva. Prabhu. Prabhavatamapi. Prabhu means light. He is the greatest of all lights. Why is that? Because his light gives being, gives existence. See, when, when he illuminates something with his attention, with his consciousness, it comes into full-fledged being. And nobody else can do that. <laughs> Only Shiva. Because why? Yogi namapi yo yogi. He's the greatest yogi. He has the greatest mystic powers. He can do anything. He can create anything within or beyond our imagination. Our minds are limited, but his is not. So that's because karananam chakaranam. He's the cause of all causes. He is the one who causes cause and effect, karma. He's behind it. He writes the rules. He's the lawmaker and the judge and the policeman. <laughs> he makes sure all the universal laws are followed and that no one can break the laws of nature. Yato loka sambhavanti, ya bhavanti yata punaha, sarva bhutatma bhutasya, harasya mitatejasaha. To him from whom all the worlds start into existence, and unto whom all the worlds return when they cease to exist, to him who is the soul of all existent creatures, and who is called hara, of immeasurable energy. Hara means thief, means destroyer. So he is the destroyer of the entire material creation at the end. But up until that Mahapralaya, he is the destroyer of his devotees' sins. Sins simply means attachments and identifications. Mistaking the rope as a snake, mistaking this material world as a really existing thing and mistaking the material body as the self. See, this is our problem. We are in darkness. In darkness, if one sees something coiled up in a corner, he might think, oh, that's a snake, when it's actually just a rope. And similarly, when one is in the darkness of ignorance, one sees this material world as really existing. 
But since it's just temporary and everything within it is temporary, it's not real. It can't be real. It's basically a dream. It's a, just a little more persistent and has a little more continuity than our dreams during sleep. But in every other respect, it's simply a dream. So he helps us wake up from this dream with his light. His light is existence. It's also knowledge. It's also consciousness and bliss. Well, we made that point last time that along with consciousness, you get eternity and bliss. Along with eternity, you get bliss and consciousness. <laughs> along with bliss, you get, you get it. <laughs> consciousness and eternity. They all go together. It's a package deal because the eternal, the absolute Brahman is Shiva. And, you know, I really don't have to talk so much to convince you of this. It's really easy. Just chant this mantra, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> Om Namah Shivaya. This is given in Shiva Purana. And we just did a whole series on the glories of this mantra, the five-syllable mantra, Panchakshura Mantra. So if you really want to test whether Shiva is God, huh, chat this mantra. Get up early in the morning before sunrise. Chant this mantra on beads, you know. Uh, it's just the most blissful thing. <laughs> and you will experience directly for yourself this sat-chit-ananda. Because he is the sat-chit, eternity and consciousness. And when you come into contact with him, into yoga, and link up with him, you also become imbued with his qualities. So this is really the solution to all problems. This is really the ultimate in self-realization. You know, this chanting the names of Shiva, like we've been doing the last few episodes of this series, if, if you just took the last three or four verses that we've gone over and made them into a little hymn all by itself, that would be sufficient for self-realization. Just practicing it, memorizing it, reciting it, repeating it, like japa, like a mantra. Well, it is a mantra. So by this mantra, one comes into contact with Shiva, and by that contact, one becomes filled with Shiva's qualities. And by Shiva's qualities, one goes beyond all ignorance, all suffering, and becomes of like quality with him. This is the ultimate enlightenment. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.